the, the big dream was to just get overseas. Like we sold our, our car, um, we sold everything pretty much. Just come in with us. When it hit us in Europe, it came through hard and fast. It all happened so, so quickly. Everything's shutting down, we can't open. And actually, all of you guys have to get out of France. So nice out here. Yeah. I think it's above our price range. <laughs> if we had bought like a few years ago, maybe. You never know though. A little bit of land out here. All we need to do is park the bus up. Home at the moment where you is park it. where we park it. <laughs> <laughs> this is our bus. Her name's Rona. Her number plate's RO. And the only reason we got her is because we came home because of COVID. Corona virus, so it's, <laughs> we find it funny. We have been together five years, actually, as of yesterday. I think just the ocean and <laughs> the beach ocean. was um, something that really pulled us together. We've been talking for a long time about going overseas and going on a big adventure and finding work along the way. We were both teaching at different schools, so trying to set aside enough money to get overseas took a while. Sold everything, car, we had a boat as well. That was something that I really didn't want to sell, but we needed it to fund our trip. <laughs> and we left New Zealand with just a fat pack. Each. Mine weighed 12 kgs, yours weighed 10, I think. We didn't really have big intentions on how long we were going for. Like two years, yeah. I think, was about in our mind. You just get the travel bug and you want to keep going and exploring more places and this whole new world opens up to you. I proposed to Laura. We were in Turkey, very romantic, and it was very lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Before any, any of this COVID stuff. Josh. Hello. Are you ready? Oh, we. Oui. France was saying, you know, we're all good, we're not going to shut down. The next day, of course, as everything does with COVID, things will change so rapidly. And it was hardly changing daily, it was like changing hourly. Yeah. Everything's shutting down, we can't open. And then an hour later it was, actually, all of you guys have to get out of France. Yeah. They put us on a 13-hour bus. And then across to Dover, and then just got dumped, because the French drivers couldn't go any further into the UK. Then we caught a flight back home. The airport was in chaos. <laughs> there were people in full hazmat suits. We didn't even know where it was stopping. They hadn't planned our transits because they didn't even know where the flight could stop. <laughs> After we got back, we were in like this dreamy state because we were actually just so happy to be back. And I don't think it was until a few months later that we suddenly were like, OK, what's next for us? We realised, wow, this is quite serious. The world doesn't look like it's going to open up again. It was already a camper, but it wasn't really designed for full-time living. One afternoon, we managed to strip every single thing out, and then it was six months of rebuilding to get it back to the state that it's in now. We definitely weren't ready to settle in terms of going back into our, our life. house. Or, <laughs> yeah, going back into the life that we worked so hard to leave because it was hard to leave, really. We wanted to carry on travelling. We wanted to keep living like we were overseas, but do it in our backyard. Rona is small, but to us, she's the perfect size. Whoa, good girl. She houses everything we need, and we couldn't be happier. We're not sure if the bus is quite big enough for too many children. We definitely have thought about having kids ourselves, but we aren't ready yet. But it is something that we would like in our future. Hey, eh, Joshy? Hey. <laughs> One day we'll have some kids. Okay. When we went down to the South Island, we worked in a place called Skiwi Land, up Coronet Peak, teaching 
kids how to ski. So that was our job every day was to go up the mountain. We found out at five o'clock about the cases and then at six o'clock we're in a level four lockdown. We were meant to be getting married in um, January. We've had to make a really hard decision, unfortunately, to postpone our wedding. The most important thing to us is having family there, and if family can't be there, then yeah, we're happy to, what's another year? And fingers crossed that in the next few weeks, we will be able to finish up our season here and be able to travel back to the North Island. If Auckland opened its borders and my sister had the baby, we were going to come up quickly. But um, yeah, Auckland just stayed, stayed locked up. This spot's so good. I'd say this is probably the nicest driveway we've ever stayed in. <laughs> We have been very lucky to be employed by my school that I originally started at. They're employing both Josh and I this time. Good way to top up our bank accounts before the next step. My dream definitely wasn't to be back in Hamilton, but it's where I've got family, and family's really important. You can't see my sister, even though she's only uh, two hours up the road. That's really hard. We still haven't to this day seen little Freya yet. It's a month old tomorrow. Really? A whole month? Yeah, I know. Yeah. I, I pretty much cry about it every day, honestly. Yeah. I feel for my parents as well. Most of the families outside of Auckland. We're all in it together, I guess, and we're just making the most out of the situation, even though it is really sad. We'll oh. catch up soon and hopefully you guys drop down a level soon. I do it because I love helping people and making sure people are safe. These guys all just found themselves off their feet, I think. Yeah. They all just turned and started swimming this way. You have a lot of responsibility, but you can definitely pair it with a lot of fun. We're just going to take the boat out. We had a friend who punctured his lung. That was really scary, you know, a moment where you're like, I'm, I'm really in charge of this person's life right now, and the main thing is getting them back to safety. The surf spot got the better of him and he came down really hard on the rocks and it took us about like an hour and a half maybe to get him back to shore because every little bump in the boat was causing him so much pain. But it all turned out okay. We got him back to safety and got him into hospital. Yeah, it was tough, but we're just really grateful that he turned out okay. Right from the start of the pandemic to now, one of the biggest things is how little control sometimes we can have of the things going on around us and you just have to roll with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And just this is the first real live meeting of little baby Freya. Yeah. Here they are. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this will be I didn't mean to punch you, sorry. You are. I didn't mean to punch you. I'm sorry. It's okay. Oh. Look at it. Hello. I want one. <laughs>